So today I'm going to show you how to do three easy steps to painting a snowy mountain. And what I'm going to do is draw out my mountain first with a watercolor pencil. A watercolor pencil will blend in with the rest of the paint because it turns into paint. So we'll take a watercolor, now you can do it with chalk if you want to, but a watercolor pencil will blend in with your colors with it'll, because it turns to paint. So we're going to get some peaks first. Let's get our peaks. So let's draw them out first. And then once we get our peaks done, we'll be able to paint them in. Nice and peaky for this one. Lots of nice peaks for your for your mountains. Now there we go. So you can have as many peaks as you want and then you get it started that way. See? So that will make it easier for you to get your peaks before you start painting because then you don't have to do as much adjusting. So take your flat chiseled edge brush, synthetic, and mix up a nice dark background color for your mountain. So this will be your second step. Your first step is to draw out your mountain peaks first. So let's get a nice dark background. I'm just going to add some ultramarine blue, a bit of red, and a bit of burnt umber. And I'm just going to mix that together for a nice dark, mostly blue though, nice dark blue. Okay, so that's all you need there. And then we will fill in our mountains. So just fill them in, start where you want as long as you get to the peak and come down. I'm just using the chisel edge of the brush. Get all those peaks filled in. There we go. See how those peaks help you get your shapes and then you don't have to adjust too much. Fill in this one here. Lots of paint to get it started. Double load your brush. And come down as far as you want, depending on how big you want your mountains. There we go. Get it covered nicely. See how it's starting to take shape? Some more paint. Make sure you have lots of paint on your brush. Look, got a full. And that will help you fill in those areas without having streaks or having to scrape on the paint and go back and get more all the time. There we go. I've just sort of gone diagonal to the right because you can almost shape up your mountains while you're doing it this way. You can go half that way and half that way if you want. And that way you'll, you'll have an idea of where to shape up your mountains. Okay, you need more paint. There we go. So always load your brush. Don't let it go too dry. Let it go too dry. You're going to get this right here. Okay. If you're using a really big canvas, I would suggest that you use smaller canvases to practice on or paper, you know, watercolor paper, acrylic paper, something like that, or cardboard. Practice on first. And if you're planning on doing a big painting, a little practice in first and then you won't waste all your paint. Good. See, the mountains are shaping up already. Good. So like I say, come down as far as you want. And now we have some nice mountains. See if you go to the right, half half the mountain to the right and half the mountain to the left, and you almost see shapes there already. But I'm going to show you another way to get your shapes properly. 
So if you're happy with that, if you need two coats, fine, put two coats on. If you don't, just leave it at that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take some chalk. So step one was drawing on your lines with your watercolor. And step two is filling in your mountains to get their shapes. And step three is to take some chalk. Take your chalk and make your squiggly lines. I've had another video on mountains before too and uh, there were three steps. This one is four. So take the very tip of your mountain and make a squiggly line that will help you get some shapes. Okay, so that's one squiggly line. You can even start a squiggly line anywhere you want to. It can be over here. It can be wherever you want it. All you're trying to do is figure out what side of the mountain you want for the sunlight and it keeps you in control of where your brush is going to paint. And because you'll I'll show you now when it's done. And let's try another one over here. A squiggly line over here. So you can even go way over here if you wanted to. So you can have any kind of squiggly, squiggly lines you want. This one can be down here, and this one can be here. So as long as you got a line there, that really helps you keep control of uh, putting your paint on your mountains. Now I'm going to use an angular brush. Great brush for flowers, synthetic, chiseled edge. And you don't have to use this if you don't want to. You can use a flat brush. Whatever brush works for you, but I would suggest a chiseled edge because we can get right up against the edges here, okay? And, and you have better control. So you can dry this paint in the back here. You can dry it because we are going to use some white paint. So we still need to get some shadows. And we're going to use some of that dark paint that we did we used for our background. So we'll use that to get some nice highlights on your mountain, some snow, some nice snow. So we'll start at the top on this side, the squiggly line on the right side, and we'll just pull down some, some snow. Just pull it down and leave some openings. Okay, so just leave some openings. Now we're going to put a, another coat of white paint on there to uh, make it like really like a snow cat. Snow cap mountains. Okay, so, so just put that start at the top and when you work your way down just leave some holes. Here we go. Okay. So that's that one, and then we'll take another one. And we will start at the top, and because that nice chiseled edge angular top, that nice pointy top, I can take my brush and control that top part that I want. And I'm using a squiggly line to show me where to go. And I'm just putting on some, just some few short strokes and leave some holes. See? Just leave some holes. Okay. Just stay up against the squiggly line and make sure Leave. See, not pretty. Make sure your next coat is uh, got some of that darker blue in it, so it won't be too bright yet. We just want to get an idea of how we're going to make our mountains. So, get our snow on there. So I'm using that angular brush for that top. Helps me keep my peak. And because we're using a shadowy white. It's okay to come down, but like I said, leave openings. Now, see, so if you're using a palette knife, that would leave openings for you. So we're not using a palette knife. This is for people who have a really hard time with palette knife. I may be able to come up with an easier solution with a palette knife, but a lot of people have a hard time when they're starting off mountains to use a palette knife. So the next best best thing is your brush, flat chiseled edge brush. There we go. Now, good. 
Now you can also use a fan brush. I'll show you a couple of different ways you can do this. I've used this in my other video. I can leave a link to my other video if you like. Um, so I'm just picking up some of the blue and white again. And I'm going to go to the top of here. And I'm just going to pull down and see how the fan brush leaves holes for you. Just leaves the holes for you. Now you can go back over what you did down here. Alright, so. But you can see the fan brush. I like the fan brush best, but I want to show you different ones. They still leave holes. Alright. And come use your squiggly line. Good. Good, good. And I'm using the chiseled edge of this brush. I'm not doing it this way because it's too hard. Keep control. It's all about control, see? You're the one that's in control, not your brush. You have, well, your brush helps, but you're, you you got to be in control. If you lose control and your paint takes over and your brush takes over, then you get very confused and disappointed. So that's that. So we're, we're doing, you know, this step here to, to get on that uh, paint, getting the snow look. Now I have two different palette knives here. So I want to show you different ways that you might be able to, you, you could, what it is, it takes practice. And I'm just scraping it on the corner. I'm, I'm left-handed, so you might need, I'm going to put it on both, both edges. I'm going to put it on the whole bottom because it makes it so much easier for you to do that. So I'm just putting it paint, white paint with my dark mixture on my palette knife. I need two edges. I'm just going to do it that way. And then I'm going to start, like I said, I'm, I'm left-handed, so if you're right-handed, you might want to do it this way, I guess. But I'm doing it this way for all you left-handed people. And see, if you could get the hang of that, that gives you the better. See how it leaves holes for you? And just laying it down. I'm just laying it down and pulling it down. So if you got paint on the whole back of your brush, that will, you can lay it down. Just either the corner. There we go. Just the corner. Or lay it down flat. You'll still get those holes. So getting the holes is a, is the important thing because the holes leave all that nice uh, shadows. And let's try this one now. Just see what happens. So this is a little bit of a different shape. So I'm just going to put it on both sides. And I'm just going to touch and pull. Well, that one don't work as good as the other one. I like the other one better. Not getting anything out of this one. I don't want to do that. See how you have an experiment? But I don't like that one. I think this is the one that most artists use when they use a palette knife. But it's not working for me. You have to use whatever works for you, okay? Never mind what anybody else says. You can look at lots of videos and they'll tell you use this and use that. But if you can't, don't give up because that's the worst thing about um, you know, looking at videos and they say do this and do that and this is the right way to do it. And, but, and then you get discouraged because you're thinking, oh gosh, I can't do it because they told me to do it a certain way and I didn't do it right. And, but really, that's not true. you got to find your own way to paint. It's your own way. To, your own way to do anything in life, really, isn't it? So find your way. Your own way. And then you can, whatever works for you, as long as you got the basics, as long as you got the basics in painting. So if you want to do things your own way, but you still need the basics of color mixing and shapes and composition and uh, focal points and all kinds of stuff, yes, learn all those basics. But when you go to put on your paint, use whatever colors you want, but make sure that the, 
they're they harmonize with each, each other and whatever but just enjoy the painting process and the more you know about it the more you'll enjoy it now I'm going to get some color in the, that shadow area is really nice but I still want to have a little bit of depth in there so I'm going to take my shadow color so once you get that base color done you can keep that and just add some white to it and you'll get some different shades and different values of that color okay so I'm just making it a little bit lighter and I'm going to pull down some lines back here just to suggest these are just little short strokes in the back just to suggest that there's a bit of snow back there too and I might even put a little bit of snow back there and up here that way you can straighten up your lines good leave little holes you still want those darks to come through okay see that over here good just these little bits of just see because you all you need almost three values on your paintings no matter what it is like dark medium and light and so if you have three values in your paintings they'll come alive for you there we go they're shaping up aren't they now clean off your brush and we'll put our final coat of snow on there we may have a uh, final coat depends on you know how white you want mostly the peaks will be the brightest because we want to show a snow peaked mountain or show cap a snow capped mountain I keep starting in this middle one here because the tallest so but yeah, so your paint can be dry or it can be wet, but I'm, I'm finding that if it's wet, then it's just going to blend in what's already there and you can't get a really nice bright white. Because right now, I'm just adding pure white this time. All right, so just pure white, just to get that really nice snow peak. Just the top, don't touch anything else. Just the top. We'll wor worry about the rest after. See how pretty it is when you just do the top? Look. Just little strokes of white on the top. Don't be tempted to go over your openings here. Don't be tempted. Just go to the very top. Good. Now, what we can do is add a little bit as we come down a little bit. Just here and there, we'll probably put one here, probably a little bit here. Probably we will come down over this mountain here. And so you can do it, shape it up the way you want it now, see? Just using pure white, if your paint is still wet, they'll blend together. You can even tap at it. If you tap at it, you'll get all these ridges. There we go. Tap, 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 but you don't have to do that all the way through. See all the nice snow coming out? Look, little bits of snow here, a little bit of snow there, a little bit of snow here. I'm going to leave that there. Looks kind of cool. See? I made my own decision. A little bit here. Maybe a little bit here, tap on a little bit here. See, and you get all these shapes as you're doing that. Isn't that cool? Look. 
Look at all those cool shapes. And that squiggly line certainly helped you. Right, a little bit here, a little bit there. Jumping over. Jumping over places. There we go. I want to get some more up on this peak here. Make it nice and bright. I might wait for that to dry completely and then I'm going to add more white only to the top. Right now I'm just trying to find places where it might be some extra mounds of snow. I'm just pushing on. I'm pushing my brush. Tap or push. Tap, 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 push if you want. Right, let me get a mound of snow then, see? Where we just pull a little bit, then you're going to get just a little bit of snow. All right, let's try a little bit more on the other one. And then we'll wait for it to dry. And then we will... You can even change up that back, you know, any anything that you want to do. Just move your brush around and have some fun. If you want to change up, uh, let's see, let's see. If you don't like the shape here, say, then make a little squiggly line. Just get it up like that and then start pulling it down. And you get a different shape. Good. But I kind of like the rugged ed edge, so that, that can come out as rugged as I would like. But I'll put some shadow back into that. Um, all right, let's let that dry and add some peaks. So with your dirty brush that has white on it, um, just use a little bit of that for this other side. Just a little bit, not much, just a hint. Just a hint there might be some snow back here, not much. You know, so you know you you have a look at some pictures of mountains and see how the sun is shining on them and where it's shining and where most of the paint is and where most of the snow is, and uh, that will help you decide where you want some of your snow. So I'm just guessing right now because I'm just making it up as I go along. So I'm just thinking, you know, maybe there's a bit of light back here somewhere, but not very much. You can even put some dark blue paint on again. If you mess it up, don't worry. Go back to your original color, okay? No, don't, uh, don't destroy your painting or get upset. Just put dark paint on it again and just put some more darks in between what you just did. That's all. That's all. Good. Now... So I'm just going to pick up some white paint and hopefully this is dry, it should be, and I'm just going to add more white to the very top. I'm not going to come down very far this time because I just want to, these are pretty high up in the sky so they're pretty white at the top here because they're full of snow, they're the highest peak, they probably got more snow on them than, than the rest of the rest of the mountain. Just a little bit on the top there. Maybe right here too. Maybe right here. See how that brightens up when you... See? Good. Good, good. So, see how it's bright around the top there now? Love this, uh, this brush here for doing this because you got that nice little pointy top to it, see? It helps a lot to keep those peaks. So that's just an angular brush. You can use these in painting in, in flowers too. And I think we're okay. If you can't you make you get too much of a I'm just gonna take a toothpick I'm just gonna try this I haven't tried it I'm just gonna try it anyway you can put some little dots of not much just in case you didn't put enough 
um, shadow in there. You can put some little dots of uh, shadows. This is for people who sometimes put on too much white paint. You'll get some of these little dots there. It kind of gives a kind of a so many different ways you can paint, but you know, as you go along, you'll figure out some things yourself too, right? You just figure it all out yourself, come up with your own ideas. And uh, from the videos, you learn this and that, and some techniques and tricks and things, and, and you put it all together, and eventually one day you'll just put it all together and do your own kind of paintings and have your own style. I'll just fix this little here. I'm not fussy about how smooth that is, I'm just going to add a few little. Just bring it in a bit. Like when it's too even. So we'll just pretend our little squiggly line is still there. And then we'll put our weight on that. So you have to play with it until you get what you're looking for. See, I mean, if you're not happy with it, let's go back over it again. It's okay, it's better. I like that better. So I'm going to show you something now. Make some mist at the bottom of your mountain. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a scruffy old bristle brush, just a small one, probably size eight, or smaller, whatever works for you. And I'm going to make sure it's dry as damp, but I'm wiping it off in my tissue just so it won't be too, too wet, because we're going to call this dry brushing. And then we're going to fill it up with paint and I'm going to wipe it off again. All right, just wipe it off in your tissue so there's not too much on there, see? And then we're going to use that to uh, mist our bottom of our mountain. So we're just going to take this touch and make some circles. Make some circles. This can be dry if, if, if it is dry, it's no problem. And just make these circles and push and push, you can even go up into the mountain and make some nice mist. And if you run out of paint, go get some more, wipe it off in your tissue, and make circles again. Okay, and that will clean up your bottom of your... And you can even put it in here. You can put it wherever you want it. Good. See, that makes mist at the bottom of your mountains. Look. And next, how to mist your mountains. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. Easy breezy. Now that looks nice, doesn't it? So that's not a bad little mountain. I think that okay, looks pretty so nice. Okay, so in now this video we are going to put a nice grassy area down here first. And what you're going to do is pick up some of your sap green and sap green and some ye cad yellow. If you don't have those colors, just use the closest colors you have to it. All right. We got a nice bright green. More yellow than green, I would say. Let's try that. Have to experiment to see what you like the best. So I'm going to just lay that on there. And I'm going to tap underneath here. With my bristle brush. I'm just going to tap, 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 tap. It's a nice grassy area. I'm using the top of my brush just to get that really nice grassy look. I'm going to come down, come over here, and so I'll come all the way over to the bottom of those mountains. Right over, just tap, tap, tap. I'll tap along this line. Get a nice
see how you get different color greens when you do that? Different values of green when you got some yellows and greens mixed together. Good. So because the shadow is on this side, we're going to make keep this grass over here a little darker. Okay. Good. Just keep tapping. Pick up some more of your more green this time to keep a darker color. Just keep it going. You can even pull up a few little lines here to make it look like there might be some background trees far away. Just a few little trees in the background here. There we go. Good. If you don't have enough paint, just put some paint back there. Pull up. Nice little distant trees. Just tapping over the area again and pulling up just so I can show you that if your paint dries, just put more on, that's all. Now these are pretty distant, so they're pretty small. Good. Marvelous. So what we'll do now is we'll continue on down. Might even put a little river or something there too, but I'm just going to put the grassy area on first just to keep that going. All right. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to start over here. Tapping on with my bristle brush. The bristle brush gives you nice texture. Almost makes grass for you, see? See how nice and grassy that looks? It's because of the brush. If you used another a synthetic brush, you just get um, very smooth lines and you'd have to rework the grass several times to get what you're looking for. So the bristle brushes work really well. So we'll just continue on. Let's see, we'll go to the lighter side over here. I want to keep this side a bit lighter because that's where the sun is. And the other side a little darker because that's where the shadow is. Always keep mind of your shadows and your sun, where your, where your light is coming from. And where your shadows go. And that way when you get your comp composition done, you can know where your lights and your shadows go. It might get a little darker down this area. Okay. All right. So I'm keep going. You can add a little bit of um, yellow ochre to your mixture, and that will give you some nice different colors of your greens and yellows. It's a pretty color. You can rework your grass if you don't like the colors or if you want to change something up. So whatever you think, whatever colors you like. It's a nice green grass, and so I'm going to lighten that up with some yellow in a little while. So I'm just tapping all over the place because I want to mix in some of that yellow ochre with the green too tone it down a little bit. It's kind of a bright green or strong green. I'm not too fussy about too strong. But the yellow ochre added to green or yellow, it makes really nice colors. Yellow ochre. Use it as much as you can. So I'm going to darken up that area now on this side here, so I'm going to go back and add a little bit of my blue to my mixture of green and yellow. Keep it dark on that side. There we go. So that's pretty nice. Good. Okay, so I'm going to go into just my yellow. 
oops, I'm a noisy bunch. So just my yellow. And I'm going to go back up here again to get that brightened up up in that area. See how pretty that is? Alright. Make it nice and yellow. Good. Down a little bit here. can even jump over a spot there just to give it some shadow in between those colors. Just adding a few highlights here and there. So, Highlights really make your painting jump out. Now I'm thinking I might come down to a little river right here. Maybe it's coming down this way or coming, coming from behind the trees somewhere. So I'm just thinking, trying to make this up as I go along. Um, down so you come over and down that will give an illusion of a hill. See? It's almost like a little hill. Good. And we will get some yellow ochre and add it to that yellow. And we'll come down I want to leave those darks. So I don't want to I'll lay it on top of here a little bit. Let's start off the top here and then come on down and we'll just think maybe there's a little, little river. Maybe it's coming off behind there. We'll use our imagination to see where it's coming from. I'm thinking it might come out through here and run down. Let's see, let's see. Probably over that way. Let's see. Not sure. We'll see. We'll keep playing with it until we get something we like. There we go. Might want to lighten up a bit more yellow. So as you can see, grass is pretty easy, but you do have to go back and forth just to get some of those different colors and different values of color. Okay, it's kind of nice, isn't it? I'm trying to keep those shadows back there. That's kind of nice. See now we can put a little river or something in there. Let's just take some ultramarine blue and some white and. Uh, See if we can come up with a little bit of a river here. Let's see, let's see. Maybe it's coming back here somewhere. And we'll just pull it out. Just go back and forth. Get a little bit of a river in here. I'm not sure. Um, maybe it's coming over this way. Maybe it's coming over this way. We'll just make some little marks here and then it goes over here, down around here. So let's just use that as a guide, okay? It's always nice to draw it out first and then you can see where you're going with it. I'm just going back and forth, horizontal lines. Horizontal, don't be tempted to go up and down or a diagonal or anything. The horizontal is what works. There we go. Good. And if you don't like it, just paint over it with your grass. So don't worry about it too much. Let's just go. Right now we're just trying to figure things out. And that grass, my grass is still wet, so you can draw yours first if you like. 
right we can make some changes along the way just want to show you I want to show you how a painting progresses and the changes you can make if you don't like it and all kinds of stuff so that's why I just continue doing things and trying to make things up as I go along um, and uh, that way you can see how how some artists or myself bring a painting together. I'm going to take a small fan brush and I'm going to load it with some dark colors, okay, some um, burnt umber and some blue. some sap green and then I'm going to put a few little trees right here so probably put a little just put a line here just a few little evergreen trees make your line first and once you get that done so what we'll do is we'll put a little tree here with our corner of our fan brush So we'll make our little line first and then we'll take the corner of the brush and tap up some of those smaller ones. Stay in the middle and pull out. Stay in the middle and pull out. Stay in the middle and pull out. Right down to the grass. All right. Good. And we'll put another one next to it. Let's put another one next to it, a little taller this time. So get your line down so you can get to the top of your tree. And then just tap, tap, a couple little taps up there. And then as you come down, stay in the middle and then pull out. Stay in the middle, pull out. Stay in the middle and pull out. Stay in the middle and pull out. Stay in the middle and pull out. They can be a little tricky. Stay in the middle and pull up. But you can go back over them again. Alright, so we'll get that done. Good. So that's two. And three. So we'll make another line. There's your line. Corner your brush just a little tap in the middle there just so you can get tiny little branches and then in the middle and pull out in the middle pull out pull out middle pull out well I should say tap out tap 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 when you get down to the bottom you don't have to worry as much you can just tap away I'm still using the corner of my brush as long as you get some shapes of trees good so let's do the other side. Let's put a tree here on the edge of the bank. We don't want the trees to be all the same size, so I'll try to make them different sizes. I'm just touching at the top there, barely touching, and now I'm tapping in the middle and I'm pulling out. Tapping in the middle, pulling out as I'm coming down. Tap in the middle, pulling out. Tap in the middle, pulling out, and just tap, tap, tap the rest of the way down. Oh, well, fell over the river. Okay, that's another one. We're going to be putting some highlights on these, so we have to shape them up, we will. Alright, so we got another one to do. Maybe a little bit, a little tiny bit shorter. Turn your brush, make a couple little taps, and pull out, pull out, pull out, tap in the center, pull out. Okay, as long as they look I'll do some bigger ones for you someday, so we can get a real good close-up of them. And let's see, maybe another one over here. Maybe a little bit taller. And touch, down and pull out to the side, out, center, out, center, out, center, out. A little tricky. Takes practice, as you can see, I'm not, uh, you know, still having a little bit of a problem. But I'll shape them up as we go along. Alright, because that's a bit too bright. Make sure your paint is nice and dark so you can have a really nice dark underpainting. 
good. And we do one more, maybe two more. We'll do another one right here, a taller one. And we'll just tap, center, out, center, out, center, out, center, out, center. Looks like a scary tree to me. All right. We'll just fix that up. Sometimes your brush, you can see the, the brush brings the, the edges down or up. All right, I'm just going to put one more tiny one on the end here. We'll just touch. Practice them before you actually do them on your painting because they're a little tricky. You know, maybe you can find a better way to do them. Maybe you can use a, a flat brush and just make a line and pull them out to the sides. I'll see if I can come up with some different ways to do these trees and make them easier for you. So now we get that much done. So we'll pull up some little trees in the distance here just by tapping on some your leftover dark paint and pulling up. Pulling up some trees. It looks like far away distant trees. And even lighten them up a little because they are distant. You don't want to be too too bright. Just add a little bit of yellow to your dark. And just tap, 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 and pull up, 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 up. See that? You get some distant trees. Isn't that cool? And you can do them over here too. And pull up, up, up. Good. So see that? So I hope you can see that because uh, it's really cute and it's very easy. Okay, so let's highlight a little bit of those trees just to bring them out a bit more with a bit of yellow on your dirty brush and the dark colors that you're using. And just tap, tap, tap on the edge there at the corner of your brush, that's all. So now, we'll do each one just on the right side, because that's where the sun is coming in. And we'll keep them a little bit brighter on the right side, just sort of get that on there. If it's too yellow, we'll just add a little bit more dark to our color. Alright, so just trying to brighten up a little bit there on the edge. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tap over that again because I find it a bit too yellow. And just go back in here and just tap over that again. Good. Alright. Kind of brings them out on, on the light on that side there. And if they get too bright, just go back in with your darks and go back in between them just to make more shadows, that's all. All right, so just want to darken them up a little bit more so they won't be too, because they are further back, so. And you don't want to lose the shape. So just put some darks back in if they get too much, because I'm telling you that because it's so easy to put too much on there. That's better. So now I'm going to put my yellow on again. We got a little bit of sunlight coming in on this side. Just gonna lighten them up a little bit. You barely see them because they're kind of they're kind of small and we don't need a lot there because we want to keep them a little dark in the back. All right. See so a little bit too much yellow here, so just tap into it. Don't go all over the place. Just go into the spot that's kind of. Uh, messed up a little bit. All right. Good. So just take a small flat chiseled edge synthetic brush and put some blue, just some blue and a bit of white. A little more white than blue. And we'll bring our little river down here, make a little waterfall. So just touch and pull. Touch and pull. See, little waterfalls, okay? And then we will take our blue and we'll come down the river. So we got that. We'll just move that along here. And we'll take our blue and we'll come down the river. We got a bit of blue, but um, we want all the highlight yet. Just going to brighten it up a little bit there for you. All right, let's just go in here. Put this in here. 
Now, if you notice that the, as we go further along, the video may look a little bit different because I accidentally deleted a few files, a few clips, and this is one of them. And what I had to do was redo part of the painting again, but I had to redo, the, instead of doing the whole, re, the whole painting, I just uh, started this section. So it looks a little different, um, that's why I had to redo a couple of clips. It's hard to understand, but it's a lot easier than starting the whole painting all over again, because I have a lot of it done, and everything else came out fine. But I accidentally deleted it. So, that wasn't fun when I found that out. <laughs> that happens sometimes, you know, where you don't have a, where I don't have anybody to help me with my recordings. I might turn my back and press, thinking I'm pressing record, and here it's uh, on pause. So, that's happened to me a couple of times. Alright, so I think I'm going to just put that little river there. It might look a little different, but, um, at least I'm, sh you know, able to show you the techniques anyway. So this little part here, the rocks right here, they come over here like this. Just pull straight over, straight over, straight over, straight over. That just gives you somewhere for the water to fall, okay? All right, so just pull him over. Good. And now we're just going to make that little falls. And then we'll... In, as we go along, we will make it even better. Touch over and down. Touch over and down. Touch over and down. And then we move around like this. So we'll be doing all that and straightening it all up. Good. We'll do a little highlight on the grass. That's good. We'll just leave that there like that for now. Just do little highlights on the grass there now. So we'll just add a little highlight up here, up underneath those trees, so we can blend the trees in with the grass, right? Because you get, you don't want the trees to look like they're just sitting there. And all right, so just tap into the bottom of the trees. Good. It's a little too bright, and we'll fix it. So we're just adding some highlights to the grass all over the place, down over the hill. Good. And this one here is a little bit too bright. We'll tone it down. So we get get it too bright. Just go back over it again. It's the easiest way to do it. Make that grass go up around the trees. Give it a natural look. Good. Oh, tap, tap, tap. All right. Okay, that's, uh, that's good. See, so you put the grass underneath the trees to make the trees look like they're into the, into the grass. All right, so now what we want to do is you want to darken up those rocks and highlight that water and then whatever else you want to do with it. It'd be better if this stuff was dry here. Sometimes it's better if it's dry. When we were doing the grass, it was nice that it was all wet because it all blend in with each other. And uh, But sometimes it's nice for the underpainting to be dry before you add any more paint to it. Especially if you got, like trying to darken these rocks, I couldn't do it because my paint underneath was wet so kept lightening it up. So if you have these really dark, you already had them dark, it'd be better if they were dry if you're trying to put highlights on them. So it depends on the situation, right? So I'm just going to get Burnt Umber and my Ultramarine Blue and try to see if I can get this. Get this darker. I'm going to put some uh, Burnt Umber. I'll get it. 
I'll get it. it just doesn't want to dry it there we go nice and dark we'll highlight those in a little while good I bring some of that back here for a little river bank. Good, and maybe we'll go back here a little bit more. River bank and some rocks. See, shape it up the way you want it. Good. I just have a small flat brush. We're just going to lighten up that water there. So I'm going to go into my white. Maybe add a little tiny bit of blue. Not too much. More white than anything. And I'm just going to come out here. And. Over and down. Here we go, just a little tap for maybe some water fell down there. Let's go back and forth here, lighten up that water a bit. There we go. Now as we come down, A few dark lines in here just so it won't be too bright. I always like to have shadows. Darks against lights. Darks against lights is nice. Some more white and we are going to make our waterfall again. See how I go back and forth till I get what I'm looking for? Alright, so I'm just got a small flat brush and white touch over and down touch over and down and touch over and down on top of what you just did see it comes from here and then we'll come over here and come meet up with that one touch over and down touch over and down touch over and down so it gives it a little bit of a waterfall Water is falling. Yes, because the paint is wet, see it's absorbing my white. So when that dries completely, I may just give it another highlight of white. And I'm just going to tap on a little bit of falls coming on down. I'm just pushing in, push, push it in. Just so it looks like the water is falling down. The water is falling down. A little bit rough, isn't it? That's okay. I'm being old hand in the way. Alright, so I'm just going to move this over here a little bit just so it looks like it's moving, that's all. And uh, smooth it out a little bit. Alright. Good. Good, good, good. Add a little bit more white to your water here. Just tap on the top of what you already did. That's all. Just to lighten it up a little bit. Show some movement in your water. Makes it pretty. Good. Just get out a small filbert brush or a small flat brush. It's okay, whatever. And I'm just going to make a few little rocks along the shoreline there just to uh, give it an edge or make a shoreline, a little bit of a line there. So I'm just going to use my that's burnt umber and a little bit of black. I found that the ultramarine blue didn't make it dark enough for me, so sometimes I have to add black in order to get. So I'm just going to uh, leave a 
tiny bits of rocks here. Look, see that? Just touch, just touch, just touch. Horizontal, horizontal. Don't get too excited. Little rocks along the shore. You can even put some up here, it's okay. There we go, you can put some in the water. So we'll have like a one here. See where you pulled out some of that already? So that gives you kind of a hint. My, my old arm. Okay, so there we go. Smaller they get as you go back, okay? And the bigger they get as you come forward. Good. Good. And we are getting this one darker. This big old rock here. And some rocks here. I'm probably coming up over the bank. Depends on where you want them. There's a few here. You know, whatever you want. You don't want too many rocks. You don't want to, you know, distract from what you already have down there. A few around here. Just give, them, give it some interest. Maybe a little one here. I don't know. Make it up as you go along. It's your world, so you decide where you want your rocks, okay? You decide how many you want and where you want them. All right. We'll put some highlights on those in a little while. So we're almost finished now. I might put a little bit of a tree or something here. I'm not sure yet. I'll have a look. Now, as you know, I, I go all over the place when I'm painting. I'm, I start at the trees, and I'll go back down here, and I'll go back to the trees, and I'll, and I'll uh, punch around at some rocks, and I'll go back to some grassy areas. So you can go all, all over the place if you like, because that breaks the monotony of doing one place all the time like you spend an hour on just a tree you could really get frustrated and you won't enjoy it so go all over the place enjoy going different places make sure your brush is clean when you change colors that's all you got to worry about don't get lazy i know i get lazy that's why i'm saying it don't get lazy and not clean your brush if you go especially go from dark to light colors you get yourself in big trouble and then you mess up your painting and then you're like, oh no, I got to do all that again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tree right here. I'm going to go right from the top down. I'm trying to decide where I want my tree to end. I'm going to say probably here. Let's lay a little. Okay, so I'm just trying to get this so I don't ruin it. Touch and pull. And push harder as you get to the bottom. Good. Pretty scary, isn't it? Now I'm going to bring another one out from the other side. I'm going to meet up. Okay. I'm going to meet up. Well, I'm going to start here and pull up, up, up. Get skinnier. Now it's easier for you to start here and pull down. You can certainly do that because you might have more control. You touch and you then as you're coming down, you push a little harder to fatten it up a bit. See? And we have the treat bottom nice and thick okay good 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 and this is going to be a branchless tree no not a branchless tree a leafless tree how's that Let's make a leafless tree. Oops. Oops, 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 oops. I should have quit while I was ahead. Well, that's okay. Trees can be all kinds of weird old. Weird always. Good. So we have to fill in any spaces that got white coming through or some of the canvas coming through or some of the background coming through. Just give it a second coat, but just be careful because it's easy to do what what I'm doing here and uh, that is um, going outside the lines. It's because I'm, my chiseled edge brush is not chiseled edge as it should be. 
Make sure it's nice and chiseled so you can get those nice fine lines. Make sure you buy synthetic chiseled edge flat brushes in probably three sizes. It's a must. You must have these brushes because if you don't, if you don't have a filber, a fan brush, we might be able to do a fan brush, but they can do amazing things. And um, so the sun is coming this way, so the shadow should be coming this way somehow. Make sure you keep an eye out for your shadows. Good. And while you got your brush, while we're here, pull up a few little twigs or something coming up from the ground there. All right. There's a little bit of a shadow coming out here. Not much because the sun is over here. Good. Take your long liner brush and have a little bit of water on it, but not so that it's dripping because it'll go on your water, it'll go on your canvas. Okay, just tap it off, especially the uh, part above your brush part, that silver part. And I never mentioned the name because I never pronounce it properly. Fural or something. Say if you are or something. Not gonna worry about it right now. So, we're going to make some little branches coming off of here. So we'll just pull out, use the very top of your brush, pull out some branches. Hardly touch the canvas. As long as you got a bit of water on there, you're fine. All right. You'll be fine. As long as you got some water. But not much, not enough to drip all over the place. Good. Good, good, good. There we go. Now if you have a hard time with these, I'll show you a little trick now in a minute that you can do. It will give you some really cool branches and you won't know the difference. See mine are coming out a bit thick in some places. And More water, more water. All right. Make sure it doesn't drip. All right, let's see if we can get this to work. Almost. Almost. All right. Let's get some more up here. Wiggling them around. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Put on some music. That will get your hand moving. You'll be da 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 da. You'll have lots of wiggles. I don't have any music because I don't want to get distracted. I don't want you guys hearing my music in the background unless I put in my own originals, which I've done in some of my videos. And I hope you like them. I might even be singing for you live, just to show you what uh, what I do. So. That may be coming up a little later if you if you like to see some of that. It won't be too much. It'll just be enough to show you what other things I do in life besides paint. It's always you know what other what what else you do in life. Especially when you get used to seeing someone on YouTube and you're like, I don't know what else they do. I like to sing, record music. Okay, so it looks like that's enough. So I'm going to show you my little trick. So this is where your colored pencil will come in handy. Okay, I'll just use the black one. If you've got a dark brown one, you can use that. And this gives you some extra lines, like really thin lines. And because it's a colored pencil, it'll if you 
you know, if you ever need to put leaves or anything on there, you'd be able to do that because color, uh, I'm not, sorry, not a colored pencil, watercolor pencil. It's a watercolor pencil. Don't use colored pencils because this way, if you decide to put leaves on or you want to blend it in with your painting, then once you add water to these watercolor pencils, it turns to paint, you know, like a paint like. But see, look how you can get these nice little skinny tops without any effort see watch look and it all blends in so well so if you can't get your brush to do the work for you get a watercolor pencil watercolor okay don't get mixed up with color pencils because they you won't be able to do much with those but if you didn't like if you had to paint over the area with, uh, with a watercolor pencil it'll work it'll just blend in with your paint but a color pencil would just show through. It wouldn't be any good. But see all those nice little lines? You can make tons of them now. You can really, really make a lot, of, as many as you want, and lots of tiny ones, as many as you want. See? And make them squiggly. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Good. And all we have to do is highlight the rocks and if there's anything else you see that you want to do, we'll do some highlighting on the tree, highlighting on the rocks. And if we come up with something else exciting, we'll add it to it. You could also add a little cabin here if you wanted to. Uh, you could add um, another tree over here in the background, taller tree. All kinds of things you could do. You could put a horse in there behind a fence. Oh, all kinds of things. So just get a small flat brush for your highlights, okay? And for the highlight on the trunk, just take a bit of white and add it to that dark color that you had, the brown and black, blue, whatever you used. And the sun is shining on the right, so let's add some highlight to the right with the chiseled edge of your brush. Just scrape on a few highlights. Don't put a straight line, miss a piece, miss, jump, jump all over the place. Don't uh, don't lose your brow underneath. Good. Now wipe off your brush because it's too much on there if there's too much. And then what you just put on, just move it around a little bit, okay? Good. See? Just move it around. Nice, isn't it? See? You need any more white, uh, any more. Add a little bit of white to your color again. Just a little bit more this time. Just so we can get a bit of, just a dab, dab there. Don't touch, don't push, don't pull. Just touch, touch, touch. Just a few little highlights there. And maybe a little bit in here. Although it's a shadowed area, isn't it? If you want a little bit on these, just put a little bit here and there. Just to give them a, Nice effect. Just tap, just touch. Don't try not to. If you push, you're probably going to uh, just tap if you have to. And tap will give you more texture too, you know. Just tap on a few little highlights there. And make that tree look like it's coming over that one. See. Okay, we'll leave that. I think I'm okay with that. You know, you can always pick at it for many hours after. But I have to call it finish, that part finish, because we'll never end this video if I don't do something. I'm going to put a bit of highlight on this up here, down here. Just using the same bread, uh, burnt umber and a bit of blue or black and adding white to it, that's all. And then I'm just putting some highlight. Just making the top of a rock here. Just touching, look, I'm just touching those little rocks that you just had there. Just touch, 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 touch. Touch, 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 touch. Just a little tap it in the corner of your brush. This one here, you're just going to touch and pull over. And underneath here. And then touch, 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 touch. Now you can add flowers to this or... Okay, so I think 
I don't think I need to do much more. I could do so much with it. I could add flowers and stuff, but I'm going to let you decide that. I'll put that in another painting. Just adding some highlights. I think I got all the detail in that I want. And, uh, so I'm just going to highlight these little rocks down here by just putting this here and touch, 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 little highlights on those rocks. Don't even have to do very much. Just tap and touch. Pull over on those bigger rocks here. And bigger rock here and here. Touch, 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 touch. Just to get those little highlights and rocks. So, so that should do fluffy little clouds in the sky and all you have to do is take a brush, it can be a filbert, it can be, I'm going to take my bristle, I like the bristles because they spread the paint around so much nicer than anything else, and uh, so I'm just going to make sure my brush is nice and clean because um, you want to make nice clouds, so I'm going to put some white on my palette and I think I'll add a tiny bit of yellow just so that they won't be too chalky. You can add pink, you can add, I'm just going to try a little bit of that and I'm going to take this brush that I have here now and I'm going to wipe it off in my tissue. So I'm wiping it off in my tissue and we're going to sort of Take what's left over on your brush. All right, so I got a lot of it off. See? And I'm just going to make these little round circles. I'm going to start down here behind the mountains. I'm just going to make these little circles. See? Little circles. I'm barely touching. I'm not pushing real hard. There we go. Just some soft, fluffy circles. The less paint you get on your, your brush, the better. Okay? Make some shapes. Just soft, fluffy, fluffy clouds. Any little ones, some big ones. Bring some down by the by the hills, mountains. There we go. Just little circles. Goodness, some creeping behind here. Yeah, you can go in there. It'll be okay. Just some soft little clouds floating around the sky. Having a happy day. There we go. So a little bit of yellow in there gives it a <clears throat> not such a not such a white chalky look. Okay, so see, I'm just, whatever's left over my brush now, I'm just moving it around to get some nice, soft, fluffy clouds, see? I'm even going over my trees, but if you go over your tree and, and you wipe out a branch, just put it back in again. Put it in with your colored pencil or not colored pencil, please. Do not use colored pencil. Watercolor. Very important. I keep saying color, but watercolor. Overlap a couple of those clouds if you want. See, and you got a nice fluffy sky. Fluffy, fluffy. Okay, so you can, you know, you can keep rubbing at them until they come even softer if you want to because you don't have any paint on your brush. See, you just got what's left over on your brush and there's not very much there. Soften them up, bring them together. That's all you need to do. See, I'm going to leave it at that. So I hope you like this video. If you did like this video, please give me a like and a subscribe and click the bell for more notifications. And leave in the comments what you liked about this painting. And if you have any questions, I'm just going to leave a little highlight. I forgot about this down here. See, if you have any questions or you need uh, help if you need help let me know I'm here
this is all I do. I don't do anything else. You know, this is my main thing for as long as I can keep it going. So don't be afraid to ask. I'm waiting, actually waiting for you to, you know, I'm always looking my, checking my emails, checking my comments to see if you guys were saying hi or ask me any questions and um, so I'm thinking that should do it you can put a few little flowers here if you want if you want to put some like little I don't know see I can't stop picking see this is the problem I have and I could go on and on and on but anyway I got my brush I'm going to put a little bit of white on there throw in a little bit of blue and Spread it out so it's not too much on there. I just had a few little wispy flowers there. Yeah. That's good, sure. White, brighten them up a little more. A little tap of this, a little tap of that. Maybe a few little here. I don't know if that looks better or not. You don't have to do that. I'm not sure if I like that. So, don't worry. You can put red ones there, it might be nicer, you know. But uh, if you don't like them, just take them out with your green. See, tap in your green. I like doing this because I can show you if there's a mistake or something you don't like, you can always take it out with your colors, your background colors. See, but you already started off with. There we go. See, oh, and that's something I wanted to show you too. Bring some of that grassy area down over the rocks. This is the never ending video. I say goodbye and then I'm back. Now I could do another video on this, but I want to finish this one so you can see the finished, the finished look. So tap on some grass down over the rocks. See? Same with here. Come right down over the rocks. Oops. Okay. So it looks like the rocks and the grass are all one. They're all together. Come down over the rocks, make it more natural looking. See? There we go. I, I had a feeling there was something I forgot. You want to get every little detail in there that you can. Every little detail. Just little details. Don't overdo it. Just little details. Don't want to overdo it. Right? Wherever you think you see might need a little extra detail. And that brings your painting to life, see? So, see these little details? Helps bring it to life. Good. I think that should do it. So, like I said before, if you enjoyed this video, you have any questions or suggestions, there we go. I think that's it for now. I think that should do it. What do you think? Do you think I could have did some more stuff with it? Mountains are pretty cool, aren't they? Nice clouds. Nice little tree. Nice little river. I kind of like it. I hope you like it. See? And see, look, you can't even tell with the watercolor pencils if I, all those little tiny skinny lines. And nobody would ever know. That'd be your little secret. Yours and mine. See? Nice little trees in the background. The water's coming out from the back there. It's coming down, 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 spreading out and down on the bottom there so it doesn't look like it's cutting the picture in two because you got lots of little different jagged edges and things right there we go so if you can see anything that you would like to add or you like to see another painting done like this just let me know very good all right guys i'll let you go so i'll see you in the next video signing off from allison Pryor. Happy painting, everybody. Bye.